Last week Sunday, I started speaking to you on a very important subject. Run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere. Usually on the first Sunday of the new year, I'll be speaking to you on how to develop your new year resolutions and how to approach the new year. I will do that um, coming Sunday's week, two weeks from today. But I wanted to start the new year bringing your mind to very important spiritual things. I want you to lay very solid spiritual foundations for this new year. And so last week, I started speaking to you on run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere. So we are in part two of this series, and it's titled, Don't Look Back. Overcoming Backsliding. Don't look back. Overcoming backsliding. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Hebrews 12 verse 1 from the King James Version. Wherefore seeing we are all compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which, so, which dwells so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So the Christian life is a race, a race with many, many, many witnesses, a race that is set before us. But this race has three rules. The Christian life is a race, a, the, the race has three rules. Genesis 19, the verse 17, reading from the Good News Translation. Then one of the angels said, Run for your lives. Don't look back. Don't stop in the valley. Run to the hills so that you won't be killed. Run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere in the valley. Three key instructions for your Christian life. Run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere. We all have two lives, truly. We all have two lives. The life before we die and the life after we are dead. In this context, the Bible isn't asking us to run for the life before we are dead. The Bible is asking us to run for the life after we are dead. For this was written in the context of Sodom and Gomorrah. The judgment of God was coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angel of the Lord said to uh, Noah, Lot and his family, run for your life. Run for your life. So you can see that it was running away from the judgment of God. The greatest judgment that will ever come in your life is not the one that Supreme Court of Ghana will pronounce upon you. It is the one that Jesus will sit on a white throne and every human being will stand before him. The young and the old. Those who died tragically and their bodies could not be recovered they will all appear. Our souls will appear before him on that day. And he is going to judge us. There will be two groups of people. Those who are goats and those who are sheep. The goats are those who did not accept Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. And the sheep are those who accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. The goats are the unbelievers. The goats are people who came to church like this and yet did not have Jesus. The goats are people who heard me preach about holiness and purity and so continue to live in sin. The goats are those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. The goats are those who pretended to be Christians but are not.
And the Bible says that they will be cast into the lake of fire. But the sheep are those who are born again, who are walking in purity and serving the Lord with a wholehearted devotion. They will make heaven. This running, I want to admonish you. This year, run for the life after death. Just think about this. That Jesus could appear anytime. Look at this year as your final year on earth. I am not saying you are going to die. But it's important that you have consistently your eyes on one thing. That you will make heaven. That you will make heaven. Your life, your life after death is the most important life. This year, I want to show you that many will run for success. They will be chasing after the wind. Seven areas of your life that you are spending your time chasing after. But cannot save you in the life after death. You are chasing after money, finance. How to be worthy, how to stop your financial problems, how to make more money. The more money you make, the more expenses, expensive your lifestyle becomes. So you keep looking for more money to finance that lifestyle. You were eating concote until your salary was increased. And you started eating fried rice. So you have to work more to maintain the fried rice life. You are racing for fame. You want great name. You want to be out there being celebrated. You want to be Shatawali. You want to be Stone Boy. You want to be Bill Gates. Oh, you love to sit down there. You want to be a Gollywood star. You want to be a Nollywood star. You want to be a Hollywood star. Who doesn't want to be a star? This year you are running for fame. You have spent almost all your life running for fame. But this is life before death. And life before death does not take care of your soul. You are running for friendship. You belong to all these old schools associations. You spend more time on, with your friends on phone and on Facebook and on social media than you spend with your friend Jesus. We want to be known. We want to be loved. We want to be accepted. Oh, we want to be healthy. You are running for fitness. You want your 12 packs like mine to become six packs. You are fighting hard to live long. But you are not fighting hard for eternal life. Why fight hard to live long for a life that will eventually come to an end? And live the life that will never come to an end. Man is a three-dimensional being. You have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. When you die, your spirit goes back to God. When you die, the body that you have spent almost 99.9% .9 of your life trying to please will go into the dust. After one year, after two years, after three years, nobody will remember you. I went to the funeral of my father-in-law, mommy's father. His children were crying throwing themselves on the ground. He had many children. Weeping and wailing. I really sympathized with them. I said to myself, these ladies really loved their father. He had a lot of daughters. They cried, they wept, they cried, they wept. It was in a village. The cemetery was just a stone throw away from the house where the, where the funeral was held. 
you could sit at the venue of the funeral and see the cemetery when he was buried and we came back party the girls that were crying were now dancing it was there that I said to myself I said to myself no matter what I do when I die there will be a party in my funeral so let me prepare for the greatest feast ever the feast with the lamp of God the feet with the savior of the world. Uh, let me prepare for the greatest marriage ceremony ever. When the groom comes to take the bride. When the trumpet sounds and Jesus appears in the skies. Let me be ready. The dead in the sea will be brought up. Those buried under the earth will be brought out. Those alive will be caught up. Oh, I want that party. I want that party. I want that party. I want that party. Oh, we are pursuing different fields of endeavor. We want to be financial gurus. We want to be politicians. We want to be presidents. We want to be MPs. We want to be ministers of state. We want to work with international organizations. We want to work in America. We want to work in the, U in the UK. For now, in Ghana's situation, we even want to work in Burkina Faso. Oh, yes. Anywhere. Oh, yes. Different fields of endeavor. Some wants to be engineers. Some wants to be do medical doctors. Some wants to be pharmacists. Some want to be things we don't even know they exist. When my son Nana was young, I said, Nana, what do you want to become when you grow up? He said, a lawyer, a doctor, uh, a footballer, a bishop, and an American. <laughs> we want to become many, 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 many things. In the pursuit of success, we run for the life before death, but not life after death. We want to raise families. We want to make our families great. We want our family's name to exist even after we are gone. We are proud we belong to big families. You are proud to point to this one is my uncle. This one is my auntie. You are raising your sons. You are raising your daughters to be the next great thing that happened to the planet Earth. But there is nothing new under the sun. What you are doing, people have done it before. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, there is only one eternal family. The family that will meet in heaven. The family that will unite with Christ Jesus in heaven. Oh, what a misplaced, misplaced priority in your life. Look at the things you are pursuing. You, you are racing for fun. You want to be happy. You want to attend the next party. You want to attend the next funeral. Everything is a party for you. Funeral is a party. Wedding is a party. Birthday is a party. Oh, everything is a party for you. In fact, your clothes are more expensive. You spend more money than the entire wedding cost. <laughs> your clothes cost more than the entire wedding cost to appear in glamour to appear in glamour and you were happy everybody was looking at me and when i entered even the pastor who was preaching was 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 looking at me he got confused you love fun you love fun you stand in front of the mirror you look at yourself you are so proud of yourself look at how nice you are look at how beautiful you are but it's your soul that beautiful it's your soul that beautiful it's your soul that beautiful. It's your soul that beautiful. The next suit. Oh, your suit is over 2,000 pounds. But the value of your soul is more than that. The value of your soul is more than that. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the whole world and you lose your soul. What shall it profit a man? If they give you all the money... Isom is left in Bank of Ghana. 
What shall it prove? We are in debt. Bank of Ghana is in debt. There might not be. So let me take it from here. Maybe American Central Bank. I don't know whether there is money in the Nigerian Central Bank. There should be something there. You guys have oil. You are still in debt. How can people in debt have money? You know, but if we put all the gold in the world together, all the diamonds in the world together, all the lithium in the world together, all the precious minerals and stones in the world together, what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? But look at how you protect that suit. When that guy irons that 2,000 pound suit and it gets bent, look at how angry you get. But your soul is going to rot in hell. Your soul is going to burn in hell. And yet you don't care. You don't care about, about your soul going to hell. You will protect, you will protect that car from burning than your soul going to hell. If we come to my house, if you go to a crowd business school, we have all these fire extinguishers everywhere. And to God be the glory, we had to uh, train people to become fire marshals around the property. And one day, there was fire outbreak. And these guys, we trained at fire marshals. It really hurt me when I was paying that money. But they came around, picked up the fire extinguishers. Come and see. Even Wafa, the popular Wafa on my campus. Oh, what if I enter the ceiling with a fire extinguisher? Quench everything. But there's one fire that no fire extinguisher can quench. It's called hell. It's called hell. Run for your life. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere. Because there is some fire coming. There is some fire coming. No amount of, of, of fire extinguisher will be able to quench it. There is some fire coming. There is some fire coming. There is some fire coming. Can I continue to preach? I want to read a scripture. I want to read a scripture to you. And we will be off from here soon. I want to read a scripture to you. Ecclesiastes 2. From the verse 1 to 11. Ecclesiastes 2, 1 to 11. Are we alright? Why are the lights off? Oh, okay. It's back now. Okay, now. Look at the scripture carefully let's follow it i don't want to rush it let's follow it i said to myself it is believed that solomon wrote ecclesiastes so let's see is this solomon speaking i said to myself come now i will test you with pleasure to find out what is good but also prove to be meaningless Laughter, I said, is madness. And what does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly. My mind was still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what good, what was good for people to be under the heavens. During the few days of our lives, during the few days of our lives, I undertook great projects. I built Accra Business School. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruits in them. I made reservoirs for water, for water groups of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves, had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more hells and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself, the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers and a harem as well, the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor. And this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I surveyed, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I have toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained 
under the sun. If you pursue all these things without Christ being at the center, you will come to one conclusion. That all this is meaningless. How many old men today are looking at themselves in the mirror, sick, weak. Children have abandoned them and they are looking at themselves in the mirror. So I slept with many women, had many children with many women. They look at me, it's vanity. Vanity upon vanity. Oh, someone is lying in a medical facility right now and has several houses around the world. Several houses around the world. In New York, in Tokyo, in, in Melbourne, in different countries have houses in Ghana we have hundreds of houses but that man is lying on a single bed in a private hospital somewhere can't eat can't talk he's dying when he dies his casket may be nicer than yours but every casket is a casket he may be buried in the nicest cemeteries in the world, but when the rapture comes, all of you will stand before the judgment seat of God. He may be cremated, he may be bent, whatever. He will stand before the judgment seat of God. When you pursue all these things without having in mind, that there is life after death. It becomes vanity. It becomes meaningless for you. I am not asking you not to pursue finance. I am not asking you not to pursue fame. I am not asking you, God told Abraham, I will make your name great. I am not asking you not to pursue a career. I am asking you, don't do it at the expense of your salvation. Don't pursue it at the expense of your salvation. That balancing act, giving unto God what is God, is crucial for your happiness and for your joy in life. Don't mortgage your soul for success. Don't mortgage your soul for fame. There is a longer life, an eternal life, after you are dead and gone. Now let me show you. Seven reasons why most Christians look back in the pursuit of salvation. The race for your salvation. The seven things that will let you turn from the faith. Seven reasons why you have not become what we call a justious Christian. Seven reasons why today you are in church, tomorrow you are not. Seven reasons why you are doubting your faith. Seven reasons why you are now beginning to question the Bible. Is this really the word of God? Is it not a white man's document to deceive us? The Bible is the most attacked book. The Bible is the most reviewed book. But yet the Bible is the all-time bestseller. Because even the people who don't believe in the Bible souls feel that they can't make sense without the bible <laughs> are you here with me and i want to show you from scriptures the reason why you are struggling with your faith why you are doubting whether this thing is true or not the reason why you're occasional worshiper of god the reason why you are not rooted and built up in him. The reason why when you see some of us and what we stand for, you think our life is boring. You think there's an alternative life. I have been born again all my life. If this is life, if this is life, I don't think there's an alternative anywhere. Can I show you those seven things? Can I show you? They are there. Don't, don't read ahead of me. Allow the preacher to preach. 
What I have not said, don't look at it. Allow the preacher to preach. Can I preach it right now? Can I show you the seven things? Can I show you the seven things fighting your salvation? Number one, to be in church but not in Christ. It is it's a very deceptive thing to think that you are a Christian because you go to church. To think that you are a Christian because you go to church. Well, church, to think that your name is the church membership book, so you are a Christian. Well, there is a book of life. If your name is taught in that book of life, no matter how much tithes you pay, you are still not known in heaven. You are still not known in heaven. The Bible says when we go to heaven, two places where our names will be written, one at the judgment seat of God, there will be the book of life. If your name is found in that book of life, you will spend eternity with the king of kings and the lord of lords. Number two, when you enter into heaven, You'll be handed over a white stone. On that white stone is a name. Your name is written on that white stone. On that white stone, you will have your name written on it. <laughs> heaven is going to be a very interesting place. Well, there's an argument as to where heaven is. I don't care where heaven is, whether it's on earth or it's above. I don't care where heaven is. Well, I know it has street of gold. We're going to worship. There will not be darkness. There will not be sickness. All these stubborn people you pastor who will not change, no matter how you preach, will not be there and worry you. All these children you raise and you pay school fees will, not be, will all not be there. Even when they are there, you will not pay their school fees anymore. No electricity bills. No light off. No VAT. No haircut. No IMF. Oh, what a, what a place is going to be. What a place. Several years ago, in, in the 90s, I was meeting someone and it was snowing. It was late in the evening and i was standing somewhere in germany waiting for this person to come and it was snowing and it was evening and the lights were on and the cars light and the snow was falling the beautiful buildings as i was standing there looking at this and that was my first time of traveling i couldn't at the time no matter how my pastors preached about heaven i couldn't imagine it i grew up in Adabraka. There was no way I could imagine anything more beautiful than Adabraka. Until I was on this street, the southern part of Germany. Beautiful place, a modern community. Saw the snow falling through the light, and I was looking at it. Then I started thinking, say, hey, heaven bear for power. Heaven bear for power. show power. Sometimes when we preach, you can't imagine heaven. I want to advise you. You could fear in patrol. Or for Facebook or not typo. Video of the nicest places on earth. At least it will let you imagine every snow. I was talking, I was preaching to this woman, very, very rich woman. Very, very rich woman. And I was talking to her. And I was telling her about heaven and earth. Do you know what she said? She said, Oh, so the way I might enjoy was a series so. Man call heaven, I may call hell. I mean to be in time. So let me tell you, to be in church, but not in Christ. Second Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Why is God looking for a new creature? Because the old creature was created in the garden of eden and he disobeyed god and got corrupted the old christian is corrupted so now god says i'm not going to create any man again in the garden of eden but now i'm creating a new man in christ in christ in christ when you accept jesus as your lord and personal savior you are recreated you are no longer the descendant of the first Adam. You are the descendant of the second Adam. That is Christ Jesus. The descendants of the first Adam, all of them have sin as their DNA. The descendant of the second Adam, Jesus Christ, in whom you were created. In whom you were recreated. You have his DNA and that is righteousness. 
So he enables you to live a new life of righteousness. All this you coming to church, watching pornography, having sex outside marriage, singing in the choir and doing it, playing drums and doing it, ushering and singing and thinking that you are a smart guy. You are not. You are in church, but not in Christ. But not in Christ. But not in Christ. The mystery of the Christian birth is amazing. It's amazing. It is just like you have carrying a baby in your womb. Do you know that carrying a baby in your womb, the baby is in you and you are in the baby. When the baby is born, the baby carries your character, carries your nature, carries your DNA. That is how being a Christian is. You are in Christ and Christ is in you. And he enables you to meet God's standard. Christianity is God meeting his standard through man. What a life. So if you are not in Christ, but in church, anything can offend you. Your any little thing, you will leave church. You will leave the faith. You will say all manner of things are by your faith. Number two, to be religious but have no relationship with Christ can cause you to look back. You can be very religious. The story of Nicodemus in John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, him there was Nicodemus, most assuredly, assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why would Jesus be saying this thing about being born again to a religious leader? A member of the church council. A Pharisee. A respected man who knew the Bible from A to Z. The Torah from A to Z. He understood the language in which the Torah was written. The Bible was written in Hebrew. He had read from the original manuscript. Yet Jesus looked at him and said, except a man be born again. He was religious, but he was not born again. My father was a priest in the Methodist church. And an older crappy man. I was born a crappy, but I was not born a Christian. Christianity is not an inheritance. Christianity is an inheritance. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You can be religious about everything. You can obey all the Ten Commandments and obey everything in the Bible. You can even know the Bible more than me. The, the person who taught me Bible knowledge in secondary school was a drunkard. And he knew the Bible. He knew the Bible. We used to have a subject called Bible knowledge. And the person who taught me Bible knowledge was a drunkard. He knew the Bible. Knowing the Bible does not mean you know Jesus. Don't be religious about Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. Religion is man looking for God. But Christianity is God looking for man. It's a lifestyle. It's a relationship with God through his son Jesus. It's a relationship with God through his son Jesus. It's not about liking your church and liking your pastor. And this church helps people, so I'll be there. No, it's better than that. It's a relationship with God. So you meet people. You meet people who will say, me, I'm better than people who go to church. Yeah, we understand. You are better than people who go to church. That's why they are in church. They know they are sinners. That's why they came to church. But your good works will not save you. Any good thing you do outside Christ is called good works. Any good thing you do in Christ is called righteousness. <laughs> do you understand? So don't say, even I'm better than people who go to church. Well, Jesus didn't come. Do you, when the woman who broke the alabaster box touched the feet of Jesus, 
the Pharisee in whose house Jesus was eating despised him. Jesus didn't come for the righteous. All of us would not have been here. Who would have qualified to be in, 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 in church? Who would have qualified to be a Christian if you came looking for the righteous? Yes, you are better than those who go to church because those who go to church know that they are sinners looking for a savior. When I see a prostitute walking to church, it's a welcome news for me because there is no hospital that can cure you of prostitution. When I see an armed robber singing in the choir, I'm excited because there is no hospital that can cure you of armed robbery except here, except the church, except the body of Christ, except the body of Christ. I understand that you are better than those who go to church. I understand. I accept it. But those of us who go to church, we are not saying that we are sins. We are sinners looking for salvation. Those who look back and can't run the race and can't focus on Jesus have weak foundations. But to 7, 26. But everyone who hears these words, sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. If you don't obey God's word, if you don't have a foundation in your Christian life, number four, those who are in bad company, those who are in bad company, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. When I started my New Year series, it's called the High Definition New Year Resolution. And I've been dealing with seven Ds. One of the D is called detox, detoxification. How to get people out of your life. People who are toxic people, how to get them out of your life in this year. But listen, bad company corrupts good character. I said it here, I became a Christian very young. Born again Christian, we had fellowships. This fellowship had people that were serious with Christ. And we also had people that came to the fellowship because they wanted to sleep with girls. I chose my company well. I am still standing because of my company. I've said it over and over. It's not everybody in church that is a Christian. Watch out for those who come to church, but who are not Christian. When you come to church, look for people that will help you know God, that will help you stay with God. Many people have fallen because they got into wrong company in church. One young lady was invited to a church. He got to the church and saw all these girls with short clothes. And, you know, now the thing that you ladies do, and then your breast is half of them is showing. And then you paint it with uh, grease. <laughs> some with anointing oil. She saw some of the girls ushering in the church. They have done that or they're standing there, you know, and they saw some brothers passing and looking at them. And this guy said, oh, yeah, I always thought I didn't have clothes for church. But now I realize I have some. I cannot come to church. You see, bad company invited her to church. And especially when you come to church and you find people who you are respected and valued. Doing the things you wanted to stop. And you find them in the church. It's like they give you an endorsement. It's like you now feel I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> Duncan Williams divorce. I can divorce. He didn't die for you. He didn't die for you. He has not even donated a pint of blood for you. He is not your standard. Christ is. Christ is. I saw the elder, the elder in this church. I saw one elder. I saw one elder staking Lotto. I can stake Storm. I, I, saw, I saw one elder chasing one of the, uh, uh, of the querises. I can do some. On the judgment day, the elder will be among the goat. You will also be among the goat. And we, <laughs> who will be on the side of the sheep, we will give you a nickname. Goatee. Elder Guti. Oh, what a new year message. 
What a union message. Those who look back in this race, and let, please let me warn you, let me warn all of you who I speak fondly of, who are standing in this altar, whom I have ordained you as elders and deacons, and who I speak very well of you, please, I beg you, don't use the endorsement you have received in this church to weaken the faith of young people. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. Don't do anything that would discourage the faith of people. Never in your life. If a soul is lost on the account of your behavior as a church leader, as some a church worker, oh, the Lord will come after you. Okay, the fifth reason why people look back is that they are under false teaching. Whoever is teaching them is not there. Let me show you the characteristics of a false teaching. Any false teaching exhausts the devil, not God, not Christ. Reading from the New Living Version, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. The Holy Spirit tells us in plain words that in the last days, some people will turn away from their faith. Some people will look back. Some people will look back. Why? They will listen to what is said about spirits and follow the teaching about demons. Years ago, in the mid-80s, there was a book that came out. was written by one Emmanuel Eni. Deliverance from the powers of darkness. When you were reading the book, fear enters into you. Was projecting the oppressions. And this man says, he was a grand something, something. And now he's born again. And he was, how many of you read that book? How many of you read it? It, it was a very dangerous book. Very, very, it killed the faith of many people. It killed the faith of many people. You see, Africans, eh? We are so incurably religious that even when we get born again, we are still religious. And our religion is fetish based. It's fetish based. So if you come to a church like this, where I teach you the rudiments of the gospel, <laughs> you, you, you want somebody who will tell you your mother is a witch. Your father is a wizard. I deal with Obin You want to hear something because you are more superstitious than spiritual. Oh, that's why the Ashanti prophets are milking people. Not Ashanti prophets, please. Forgive me. Are milking people. Who whom you are saying? Who's the Ufra Hey! The Sia Minoka say. The Sia Minoka say. Me whom by me in Ujna were she. Bakuya Brewa, Bakuya Ketesia. Me who say I brewano o you duku. And I Ketesia me a you in Pabua. Sister. Se one mom paya. Se one mom paya, sister. Se one mom paya. Sister, I'm not sure who does it have ya? And then the person say, yes. And then the drama will play. Bang, bang. And then somebody will shout, oh, this prophesy. What about damn papa? Oh. All my friends, when we were growing up as young Christians, I never went to any deliverance service. It's not like I don't believe. I believe in deliverance service. But I didn't see what had to be delivered from. I felt that a few things might guide my Christian life. Purity, prayer, preaching the gospel to the unbelievers, you, you know, and working with the right people. So I had some seven peace that guided and guarded me. Not a single man of God up to now has prophesied over my life. All my friends that we grew up with, 
lost their minds. They could not make any decisions on themselves until a prophet tells them to do so. I, amongst them, I think I was the only one that nobody prophesied that I was going to marry my wife. And yet we have one of the most successful marriages in this country. <laughs> do you understand? They were going to deliverance. They were moving from one prophet to the other prophet. Everywhere, see the radio, he can see you. This person can see you. They were moving, 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 moving. Now they have moved, sir, they have got him missing. I can't find them. In fact, one of them, I found one of them in a little kiosk. He was just taking, you know, he was selling and staking. Hey! Hey, that brother, eh? Every prophetic conference he will attend. I didn't know what he was looking for. Then you had the one whom we are here. Every prophet will come. And when he goes, eh, where he says, almost every prophet prophesied on him. Oh, yes. So be very careful about people that teach about witchcraft, demonology. I'm not, we are, we, when I teach those things, I thought about fallen angels and all those. But it is not the core message. It is not the core message. The, everywhere you, like Satan is exalted and magnified. And the pastor puts fear in you and tells you that I need to cover you. Oh, yes. Well, when your mind is governed by the flesh, when your mind is governed by the flesh, this message I'm even preaching offends you. Romans 8 verse 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. If you want peace, eh, stay your mind on Christ. Help God to, ask God to help you to think about Jesus more and more. Finally, before I serve you communion, Finally, before I serve you, come in. If you have itchy ears, you will look back. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. They will not put up with sound doctrine. They will not put up with a doctrine like there is hell, there is heaven. There is only one way to heaven. That is Christ Jesus. Any other way leads to hell. Any other way leads to hell. The fact that there are many road networks in Ghana, which are not tired anyway, does not mean that any road you take will bring you to Bachuna. So there are many, many people who say, we are one of the ways to God. We are one of the ways to God. Jesus came and said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. There is only one way, and that is sound doctrine. Life will end one day, you will stand before God, and you will be judged. That is sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what they are itching ears want to hear. Ah, I know what you want to hear. I know what your issue is here. One, 120 ways to prosperity. Five ways to marry the girl of your dreams. Oh, yes. Then I'm teaching it, and then you are standing up, and then you are screaming, and then you are shouting, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. But see, they, they, the Bible said that, and they, they, they gather around them a great number of teachers. So they will say that, well, when I want to hear God's word, I go to pleasant place. When I want to hear, get prophecy, I go to this church. When I want to get this, I go here. When I want to get here, I go here. We, we don't want prostitute Christians. If you love us, love us. Do you understand? Because you want to hear something. You have your own set of, of, of things that you want to hear. 
you want to twist the Bible to fit your twisted life. So you are here. You want me to say like, you want me to say like fornication is not a sin, it's a mistake. You see, you are trying. Try, I, I mean, I preached against 419 and a group of my sons gathered and one of them said, oh, daddy was right, but he should not have used the word 419. He should have said frosters. You see, you see, itchy ears. You want to choose my words for me. You want to choose my sermons for me. Oh, I used to work in the church. Yeah, the rich people in the church, they used to be called the workers' fellowship. They were the professionals in the church. And they were paying our salaries. One day they called us the young pastors to a meeting and said, anytime you are going to preach, we want to hear, want to see your message first. Oh, yes. They wanted to edit it. We were firebrand young boys. Those were the days we were calling hell on people life in church. If we're a fornicator here, you are going to hell. Fire is burning you. Fire. And people will scream. Ajay, ajay. They didn't like the way we were creating chaos in the church. Every time these boys speak microphones, they are talking against fornicators and drunkards. <laughs> and fire was burning in our bones. Even if we said we will not preach it. And we'll go and take a nice title. Like 12 ways to make money. We will still end up talking about fire is burning <laughs> fire is chasing someone fire is coming to catch someone they really didn't like us all of us left that church because they chased us out when our senior pastor travels they would they'll they they hijack the pulpit and bring pastors from outside and say we'll pay them and we'll be sitting down there and church elders and leaders will be bringing preachers I pray for you that you will be said you be, it'll be said of you like was said about Paul that you will keep this faith that you will fight a good fight that you will finish the race that you will not abandon this faith but this year this year will be your strongest year in faith ever I pray for you you see this prayer I'm praying you are sitting down if I say I'm releasing financial blessing you'll be on your feet Father, I declare for your people. Lift up your hands. I declare for your people the grace to serve you, the grace to love you, the grace to dedicate their lives to you, the grace, oh God, to keep this faith and to run without looking back in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to love you deeper and serve you better in Jesus name if you are born again give him the loudest clap offering <laughs>